Um, welcome to the last um, workshop for beginner, web dev beginner. Um, hopefully the, the past few uh, workshops have been very helpful. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's my Appa. It's a pillowcase, but I don't have a pillow that size, so I just hang it up. Um, yeah. So hopefully the last few uh, workshops have been helpful. Um, today we're going to, or this workshop, this last one, we're gonna, it's gonna be a, a relatively chill one um, since I know you guys have been absorbing a lot of information. Um, so this is gonna be just more on like the, how to design a good website. Um, what are some design principles? Um, so this one, you guys can really just like chill, kind of sit back and like relax. We're gonna look at some good examples, some bad examples. Um, and then after words at the end, we're, I'll give you guys a little time to um, like, add some extensions to your, your dog generators, um, maybe like debug some code. If you guys didn't finish your dog generator, I'll be here to like answer any questions. Um, so yeah. Um, so when I say design, I mean like general, like high level design, uh, not like specific uh, styles. Um, you'll see what I mean. So let me present. Um, and as always, I mean, if you have any design questions, you can feel free to use the Q and A doc as well. Um, I'll probably be pausing in the middle if you have questions. Um, so let me share my screen. All right, cool. So yeah, um, today's, this workshop is on how to make things pretty, but um, from a conceptual standpoint, so not just with CSS. This is like how, how to decide what CSS to use, I guess, um, is a good way to put it. So um, this is a good quote from Jeff Raskin, who is the creator of the Macintosh project, um, the, the guy at Apple. And as far as the customer is concerned, the interface is the product. And what that means is if you're, when you're creating a website, it could be very complicated. Um, some websites are, have like huge code bases um, with tons of lines of code that do a lot of things. But if the interface is not intuitive uh, and th that's all the customer sees. So, um, as far as the customer knows, the interface is the product. So as, if your interface is not good, it's, it's not a good product. Um, and that's the message of this quote. Um, so here's two examples of uh, websites. So this is the first one. And uh, this is for um, Google Nest. So it's like one of those things that sits on your desk. Um, yeah, it tells you a little bit about what it does. You could scroll. As you scroll, it kind of like does things, right? Things like that. Um, all right, this is the second example. So yeah, which one would you rather use? Um, I like, I, I don't, if anyone would rather use this website, um, feel free to ping, ping the chat. Let me know your reasons. But um, I think most uh, people with eyes would uh, prefer the first one, mainly just because you know looking at this, it already makes my eyes hurt, um, and is already giving me a headache. So, yeah, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Like when you look at a design, um, it just looks good or it doesn't, and that's the that's the tricky part about design is it's kind of hard to pin down sometimes. For this one, it's very easy to pin down, <laughs> but a lot of times design is hard to pin down. Um, so we'll be talking about a few of these design principles. All right. So why do you think that? Why do you think that website was that was so bad? Um, maybe some people in the chat can can go off, um, list some reasons. Why why you think the uh, the penny website was, was bad? Too much too much color. Yeah, so I'm hearing too many bright colors. Too busy, chaotic, unorganized. Hurt my eyes. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, for sure. So. Clashing colors, yeah. I think the big part is the colors. Uh, the colors are just clashing and there's just way too much things going on. Um, so yeah, easy stuff. Um, if nothing else, stick with consistency. There's literally a rainbow of colors on that page. Um, if anything else, stick with just like a color palette that makes sense. Um, as you can see, this is like three, uh, four different web apps, uh, four different apps um, for messaging. All of them end up kind of having pretty similar um, designs, even though they're made by like, they're, they're four different products. Um, and that's just because 
they all kind of coalesce towards what feels natural to humans and um, what humans kind of like think about in terms of design principles. So having what's most important in the center, um, which is like your keyboard on the bottom and then the messages in the like top. Um, and then having buttons that you only occasionally use such as video call at the top right with the corners where you don't need to always be looking at them, things like that. Um, yeah, so a lot of positioning as well. And then in, in general, it's the, the color scheme is white plus just like some highlighted color. So um, a color scheme usually is good, uh, blue and white is good um, or green and white, things like that. So here are the basics. Um, your, your website needs to have a focused purpose. You have a good use of color, use of font, organization, and needs to be mobile friendly. Um, and okay, yeah, I also like dark mode, <laughs> but these are just examples. Um, so folks, first we'll talk about focus purpose. Um, your as you can, if, as you notice through the, those um, messaging apps, it's like very clear what the purpose is. Uh, but from that, like, did anyone did anyone understand what the purpose of that um, penny website was? Like, the penny juice website. Well, first of all, what is penny juice? I actually don't know. But like, <laughs> I looked at it. I saw a baby. I saw like a bunch of rainbow colors. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't know what this is. But with the Nest one, at least I knew it was advertising a product and the product was some round thing that was on your desk, right? Um, and that I could tell from just looking at it for like five seconds. So um, what you need to convey is that your purpose in very, in just like a matter of seconds. And that means you have a good design. Um, and it needs to be clear, oops, it needs to be clear what actions your user is allowed to take. So, um, for example, the like from the chat example, um, it must be clear like what buttons that you're you're able to press, um, what options you have. For example, being able to start a video call, and uh, why should your user be able to do those actions, and how they should be able to perform those actions. So again, on the Penny website, like I didn't see any clear like buttons or navigation really. I mean, there was a bar, but it didn't really like nothing was highlighted so that uh, it was like the main navigation. Whereas for the Nest website, there were like four or five different navigation options, which were the main ones. So I knew like those were the ones that I would probably cycle through for the most important information. Um, these are all things that you need to consider um, when you're looking at, when you're designing your website. Um, and you have to think about uh, you as the designer, uh, you as the developer will know everything about your website, but as a stranger, the stranger doesn't know what your what your website does or what your website is supposed to do. So you have to rely on your UI to encourage the behavior that you want. And so good UI encourages good behavior. That's the whole point of the UI is to get your user to do what you want them to do. Um, so that's about focus purpose. The second thing is use of color. Um, color is used to convey a lot of different meanings. And so you have to be very conscious of what kinds of colors you use. Um, very simple example is red versus green. This dichotomy is hammered into like our brains just from the beginning of uh, like since you were born. Uh, red is, green means go, red means stop, right? That's just like very fundamental. So <clears throat> for example, um, <laughs> okay, this is a video of my friend uh, going to block Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook on Messenger, but um, <laughs> If you go to block somebody, right, it's very clear what that the block uh, button is red because you're about to take a, a action that's um, like very serious or very consequential um, versus the blue buttons are things like canceling or things that don't really take much, uh, take much commitment. Um, so like the liking buttons um, or the GIFs buttons are all blue but the red ones are the ones that you really need to pay attention to and that's why they're red. So if you want to block Mark Zuckerberg on Messenger, that's how you would want to make that one red because you don't want to accidentally do that. Um, colors can also be used to convey emotions. So uh, there's a typical like, yeah. So for example, when you look at this picture, right? This is a airplane. Um, what, do you, what do you really feel uh, when you look at this? Um, 
most people wouldn't feel like excited. Yeah, I see a lot of like calm, relaxed. This is blue is typically very like mellow and uh, it's uh, a very good like default color because it's it's pretty neutral or it has a calming effect. Um, but if you look at this logo, ESPN, uh, it's bright red and it's supposed to uh, encourage excitement or just like uh, a, a level of dynamicism um, because you know ESPN and their brand is all about athleticism and being active. And so being bright red is part of you know who they are. And if, if ESPN was like this color of blue, I don't think it would, you know, put their message across. And so you want to bake those messages into your website as well. This is a very common uh, color wheel for emotions. Um, so like yellow, you know, optimism. Um, I mean, these are not exact matches. These are just kind of like the vibes that you get. Uh, a lot of people may feel different vibes based on different colors, but these are just like uh, general consensus. So I think it's more better to pay attention just to the ends of the spectrum. So I would say like yellow, red, uh, and orange are like more excitement, more like energy. Whereas you can think of green and blue as just more like neutral or more calming or more peaceful. Gray tends to just be like also neutral um, or calming. Um, and then purple is like usually something if you want to be like, if you want something to stick out or just be like slightly different from the rest. Um, like something like purple or pink um, would stick out for most websites. Yeah. And then lastly, color can give uh, emphasis. So like this red word on this blue background already gives emphasis. Uh, but you have to remember that color is <laughs> a great tool when used in moderation, but it's not, it doesn't mean that you can always use the color and then expect that emotion. So like, this is back to the penny juice thing. Like what the fuck is going on? Oh, wait, you guys are high schoolers. What the heck is going on over here? Um, like why is that, <laughs> why is, <all> right, <laughs> um, why is the, why is there like a whole rainbow of colors right here? Oh shoot, this is being recorded, uh, whatever. Uh, you guys, you guys sound cassette forms, it's fine. Um, all right, so what you need to know is that like, if you have all of these colors, um, it does not mean that, you know, like I just inserted creativity and, uh, and like energy and calm and peace. And like, what was the other one? Strength all at the same time in my website, right? Um, like that's not what this means by adding a rainbow on here. It doesn't mean I just like hit all the spectrums of emotion and like I'm all set. Um, if you, if that's what you got from this, like color wheel of emotions, that's like kind of missing the point. Um, the point is that you use colors to highlight those emotions, but um, if you use them all at the same time, it, that's not gonna work. Colors only work when they're used for emphasis and not for your base level. So that's why most websites are white or gray as their base or black if you're using dark mode. Um, yeah, otherwise it just doesn't work. <laughs> so who is Penny Juice? Who knows? All right. Uh, cool. So in conclusion, pick a good color palette and um, stick to it. But don't pick too many colors. So like, don't pick a whole rainbow. Just stick to like a nice color theme um, and pick good colors for highlighting. Hey, Siri. Um, all right. So. Next is use of font. Um, also, uh, I'll remind people if you could mute, that would be really good, um, just so we don't have as much background noise. And then you can use the chat to communicate. That'd be really good. Um, all right. Use of font. Um, generally, a sans serif font is the way to go. Uh, there's, yeah, usually you don't want to go like super, super fancy font. I've seen websites that have like, a super exotic font or something. And usually that website doesn't look that good just because first and foremost, you don't want it to be hard to read. Um, almost all like sans serif fonts are like very easy to read and are very straightforward. And there's enough diversity that like it, it would work for most websites. So I would usually stick with um, that kind of like font. I wouldn't usually go for like the one, right, the second one at the top. 
<laughs> like that font for your website is not a good idea usually because you don't want people to struggle to read your website. Um, and also use caps lock only in moderation and only for emphasis. Again, what the frick is going on in this image? Um, yeah, that's just all caps lock, not good. All right. Um, organization. So positioning is everything um, in a lot of sites. Keeping, basically this is like very intuitive stuff, but it might be something that you don't think about all the time. Um, so keeping important stuff center and big uh, is, you know, pretty standard and usually at the top. So these are the places that your eye immediately goes to when you go to a website. And that's why you need, you should go put your important stuff there. Uh, for example, our go to go.hackamachi.org slash web is always at the top here. And that's because we want you to be able to access it at all times, but it's small. Um, so it's there because as a kind of a reminder, but it doesn't take up the content of the screen. Um, and you don't want things off to the side. So like this camel is not important, um, but the text not off to the side is important and no one, no one really sees it right away. Um, and this camel is really distracting. So bad design. All right, I think that was pretty self-explanatory um, and we'll look through a few more examples. Uh, and then last thing is mobile friendly. Uh, this is not as big of a issue because most of you guys don't really have to worry about like creating a mobile site, but this is something that you should keep in mind when you're creating your website that people will be looking at it on your phones. If you actually end up creating like a website that people use, people will be looking at it on their phones, especially these days. Most people, the first time they click a link, it's probably through like, they got sent it through messenger or email or something. So they're usually clicking it on their phone. So I think this is the next one actually. Um, so we'll pick another one. Um, here's a, another good example. This is like a typical, what you would see kind of like a Squarespace type website. Uh, you have, you know, everything centered, uh, your tip standard navigation at the top, uh, your everything's like inside a column in the center maybe like 60% or 70% of the uh, width of the page is in the content and the rest is just like margin on the side. This is a pretty standard website and it's good practice. There's a reason a lot of websites look like this. It's because it's a uh, pretty good design uh, for how people naturally just like browse websites. Uh, this is a, another example, it's Khan Academy. Um, I think it's actually, it's basically the same concept. So I'll skip that. All right, here's a bad example. So if people are fans of Suzanne Collins, I think she wrote The Hunger Games. Um, her books are great, but her website is trash. So um, it just loads. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. Yeah, so this is her website. And immediately, like, what is going on here? <laughs> um, so yeah, she put her photo in the, in the middle. Okay, so yeah, her name and her photo. I guess that's important. So that's in the middle, that's there. But then her bio is all the way to the left, right? Welcome, hi, sure, okay, that's to the left. And then her selected works is all the way to the right of the page here. Immediately, that's like, I, I don't want to have to look all the way to the left and then all the way to the right of the page. Um, two important things are on opposite sides of the screen. And then her book is not centered. Um, these, this like text is not centered. And as you scroll down, yeah. Like it, it's, it's just not a really good design. Oh, and then like some of it is centered, I guess. So it's also inconsistent. Um, also notice that these, all of this text has no like styling. It's just uh, plain text. There's no emphasis, there's no bolding. Um, the, like sign the signage of like who said what doesn't look really that different from the actual quote itself. So you can't really easily parse out like, like where one review ends and the next just by looking at it like briefly. Um, and you can't really tell how many reviews there are just by looking at it really quickly. These are all like design things that are just not great. Uh, same with the color. The color is like pretty bland. Um, Oh, and the navigation itself is like really small and it's to the right as well. So the navigation should be centered. Otherwise, like I 
like the first time I went to this page, I missed the navigation entirely. It's just like in this corner in the top right. Um, yeah, what else can I say about this? <laughs> There's, it's just like not a good site. So this is a really good example of a bad site. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a good example. Uh, so Susan Collins, Lupper Books uh, has a trash website. Cool. Um, bad example number two, I think this is a penny juice one. I'm gonna skip that. We already looked at, we already ragged on penny juice enough. I think uh, time to give that one a rest. Um, this one is just pure chaos. This is like chaotic evil on the alignment chart. <laughs> like there's, um, yeah, it's just what's going on here. There's no emphasis. Uh, so they're say they have like colors here, but it's again, like a rainbow of colors, right? Like why, why is this pink? Uh, why are these green? That these are arbitrarily chosen basically, right? It doesn't really give me any emphasis. Um, all the prices are red. So that doesn't really stick out. None of the prices stick out because they're all red. Um, so, and they're all laid out kind of in like a random fashion. So it doesn't really direct me anywhere. The index is all the way on the left. It's not very immediately obvious. Right. So this is not a great design site either. Um, yeah. So this looks like a site that was designed maybe in like 2001 or something. Uh, you don't really see many sites like this now because people have learned to actually design sites well, but I guess this one has, has stayed. Oh, actually it says uh, November 7th, uh, 2004. So yeah. Cool. That's another bad example. So just don't do those things. Um, I think you guys, it's very easy to tell just by looking at it, what's a good design and what's a bad design. It's a little harder when you're doing it to like decide what's good and what's bad, but it's still like, just like if you look at examples of sites that you normally go to, most of those are pretty good, well-designed the big sites that you normally visit, like Google, like YouTube, Instagram, like those are all very well-designed sites. So um, you have a, a whole memory bank of good design in your head. All right. Um, so in conclusion, design is important because it's your tool to guide the user uh, towards certain behavior. That's your only tool to like really design, to guide the user because you won't be there to like explain your website to them. Um, all right, so yeah, I'll first, uh, anyone have any, any questions?